the attack of a demon bear, the accidental eradication of all mutants, clones, alternate realities, and resurrections, Deadpool's baby legs, here's the entire X-Men timeline explained. The franchise opens in 1944 at a concentration camp. A Nazi scientist notices a young prisoner manipulating metal with his mind and becomes instantly intrigued. Meanwhile, in upstate New York, a young boy with telepathic powers meets a young girl who can shapeshift out of her blue scaly form whenever she wants. Fast forward to 1962, and the young boy from the concentration camp has become a Nazi hunter, and the young telepath works with his face-swapping foster sister to study and find more of their kind. Just like that, the franchise has established Mystique as well as Magneto and Professor Xavier, the two pillars in the war for mutant supremacy. When Magneto tracks down the Nazi that killed his family, he discovers that he's not only a mutant as well, but actively fighting for mutant supremacy by trying to start a nuclear war between the US and the USSR in the hopes of wiping out anyone that isn't a mutant. Magneto and Xavier discover that the CIA has been hip to mutants as well and meet a young scientist named Hank McCoy, who is revealed to be a mutant too. Another mutant already here. Why didn't you say? Say what? Because you don't know. He's also a super genius who invented a machine called Cerebro that can be used by a powerful telepath to track down anyone on Earth. Although they stop the bad guy together, Magneto and Xavier become estranged and the team splits due to differing views on how humanity should coexist with mutants. After the events of First Class wake the world up to the existence of mutants, one man, Bolivar Trask, hypothesizes the destruction of all mankind at their hand. However, Trask is laughed out of most academic circles for his beliefs and is forced to form Trask Industries in 1967. With the funds of a successful company, Trask sets out to create an army of robots known as Sentinels designed to identify and kill mutants. In order to make the Sentinels a reality, Trask experiments on mutants. Unfortunately for him, he chooses some of Mystique's close friends. Distanced from Magneto after a falling out, Mystique seeks revenge on Trask. She eventually tracks him down to the Paris Peace Conference being held between the US and Vietnamese military leaders, where he's pitching the concept of mutants as a greater enemy to the world leaders. She assassinates Trask, but is captured in the process. The world continues to live in fear of mutants, and the Sentinel program continues its development. Although it doesn't have its fearless leader at the helm, it does have Mystique's shape-shifting DNA. But back in the 1800s, the audience meets James Howlett and Victor Creed, two half-brothers who ran away from home. When a groundskeeper kills Howlett's father, the stress triggers James' mutation, including claws made of bone and a healing factor. He kills the groundskeeper, who reveals himself to be his birth father, Thomas Logan, before running off into the night accompanied by Creed. Because of their healing factor, the two ageless beings fought in the American Civil War, both World Wars, and Vietnam. While in Vietnam, they're sentenced to death when Victor kills a senior officer who tries to stop him from sexually assaulting a woman. Of course, both men survive their execution and are approached by Major William Stryker. The warden tells me that your sentence was carried out by a firing squad of 10 hundred hours. How'd that go? It tickled. Stryker enlists them to join an elite team of mutants as they set out on morally questionable missions. James, going by Logan, quickly gets tired of the team and by 1979, when X-Men Origins Wolverine takes place, has moved back to Canada. He shacks up with a woman who Creed, also known as Sabretooth, eventually kills. Logan seeks revenge but is quickly defeated. He's then approached by Stryker who offers to fuse his skeleton with adamantium, an indestructible metal. However, when he overhears Stryker talk about wiping his memory in order to use him as his personal muscle, Logan escapes now with razor-sharp claws. He seeks revenge on Creed and Stryker by chasing them to an island where they're experimenting on mutants who are able to escape thanks to the surprise arrival of Professor X. However, Logan is tagged in the skull with an adamantium bullet, wiping his memory. Wolverine survives the next two decades by drinking and, generally, being awesome. Meanwhile, Professor Xavier has opened a school for mutants to learn to use their powers and live safe from persecution. However, when the US government suggests a mutant registration act, he and Magneto cross paths again. It was a long time ago. Mankind has evolved since then. Yes, into us. 
Having spent the years they've been apart forming the Mutant Brotherhood, Magneto leads a handful of villains, including Mystique, on a mission to use a machine that will turn all humans into mutants or simply kill them. All he needs are the power-absorbing abilities of a young woman who calls herself Rogue. Because her power can kill anyone she touches, Rogue ran away from home and found her way to Wolverine. When they're attacked by Sabretooth, they're both saved by Xavier pupils Cyclops and Storm, who bring them both to the school. It's here that Wolverine is introduced to Jean Grey and the other mutants who make up the X-Men. Grey does her best to piece together Wolverine's past, but he's more interested in his fatherly relationship with Rogue, so when she's captured by Magneto and his brotherhood, he sets off to find her. With Wolverine's help, the X-Men chase Magneto to Liberty Island in New York City, where they stop his evil plan. After the events on Liberty Island, Xavier gives Logan a clue to his past. He finds his way to Alkali Lake, where his adamantium operation took place. Meanwhile, a mutant attempts to kill the President of the United States. In the ensuing fear, Stryker convinces the President to let him raid Xavier's school, where some of the students get abducted. Cyclops and Professor X are also captured as they attempt to question an imprisoned Magneto. Mystique infiltrates the prison and helps Magneto escape. He finds his way to the remaining X-Men that evaded the raid, including Wolverine and Jean Grey. He informs the heroes that Mystique discovered that Stryker has constructed a new Cerebro and plans to use his son, who is a mutant telepath, to force Xavier to identify and kill every mutant on Earth. Luckily, the base of this operation just so happens to be the Alkali Lake facility, where Wolverine was injected with adamantium. In an unlikely team-up, Magneto and Mystique join the X-Men in stopping this catastrophe before Magneto flips the script and tries to force Professor X to kill all the humans on Earth instead. Both he and Stryker are foiled by the X-Men, but only Magneto and Mystique escape. Stryker is left for dead as the dam protecting the facility breaks. However, as the X-Men's jet tries to take off, the flood of water surrounds it. Jean is forced to step outside and sacrifice herself by using her powers to hold the water back long enough for them to escape. Months later, Jean somehow returns, revealing that she had a mysterious dark alter ego inside her all along known as the Phoenix. Charles helped her repress that part of her mind when he first took her in, but the traumatic event at Alkali Lake awakened the Phoenix. She kills Cyclops just before Wolverine and Storm discover her. Meanwhile, a company reveals that it has developed a cure to the mutant gene for people like Rogue, who may want to be human voluntarily. Magneto, however, sees this as the first step in mutant extinction and reforms the Brotherhood. Their first stop is to rescue an imprisoned Mystique. In the ensuing fight, they discover that the cure has already been weaponized. Just as a cure dart is headed for Magneto, Mystique jumps in front of it, sacrificing her powers. A curt Magneto simply abandons her now that she's human, opting instead to take other powerful mutant prisoners with him. Magneto becomes aware of the Phoenix, and both he and Xavier confront her at the same time. Magneto convinces her to join him after she kills Xavier, although he has respect for his old friend and rival. He knows that he can use the Phoenix to stop the cure. The Brotherhood and the X-Men, including Hank McCoy, make a last stand against the Brotherhood to protect the cure. When the battle is over, Wolverine is forced to kill Jean and inject a cure into Magneto. However, it's implied the cure doesn't work on him. Killing Jean doesn't do Wolverine's mental health any favor, so he moves to the Yukon to live alone in the wilderness while he tortures himself with memories of the woman he loved. However, he's brought out of the wild and to Japan by a rich businessman whose life he saved during World War II. The man, Ichiro, who's dying and has used his immense resources to develop technology that would transfer Wolverine's healing factor into himself. In an effort to repay his life debt, Ichiro offers Wolverine death. But when the hero refuses the offer, Ichiro hatches a scheme to take Logan's healing factor by force. Ichiro sends assassins after his granddaughter, Mariko, knowing Wolverine will help her. Fortunately, Wolverine is able to stop Ichiro's master plan and regain his powers after Ichiro temporarily suppressed them. Frankly, the story doesn't factor into the overall story of the X-Men too much, other than in the mid-credits scene. In 2015, Logan is heading back to the United States. While at the airport, he's confronted by Magneto, who appears to have his powers. He doesn't want a fight, though. He's there with Charles Xavier, who is somehow alive and looks the same despite his body being disintegrated. How is this possible? 
As I told you a long time ago, you're not the only one with gifts. Together, they warn Wolverine about an imminent threat to mutants, Trask Industries. By the year 2023, the danger that Xavier and Magneto teamed up to warn Wolverine about has come to fruition. Trask Industries managed to build and perfect its Sentinel army to hunt and kill all mutants. Kitty Pride has developed the ability to send people's consciousnesses back in time. Xavier Storm and Magneto arrive and pitch a plan to use Wolverine in this way to stop the assassination of Bolivar Trask. Here, the X-Men franchise splits into a second timeline. Sent back to his younger body in 1973, Wolverine essentially undoes the events of every previous movie except First Class. After finding a young Charles Xavier and convincing him that this whole time travel business is actually legit, he's persuaded to help rescue Mystique from her fate as a villainous assassin. Wolverine, McCoy, and Xavier enlist the aid of Quicksilver to bust Magneto out of jail, knowing he'd be their best chance to get through to her. Together, they foil Mystique's first attempt to kill Trask, but the ensuing fight furthers the fear of mutants and bolsters Trask's chances to get his Sentinel program off the ground. However, Magneto takes control of the Sentinels and attempts to kill Trask, President Nixon, and several other US leaders to declare war on humanity. He's stopped by Mystique, an event that undoes the 2023 timeline and rescues future mutants from Sentinels. Now that there's a new timeline of events, the X-Men encounter a foe in 1983 that helps shape them as a team. The world's first and most powerful mutant, Apocalypse, wakes up after being entombed alive in ancient Egypt. His method of operation includes claiming four horsemen to fight alongside him as he destroys civilizations, so that he may rebuild them the way he sees fit. In an endeavor to start planet Earth from scratch, he convinces a young Storm, Angel, Psylocke, and Magneto to join him as his horsemen. Meanwhile, new students, Scott Summers, Jean Grey, and Kurt Wagner arrive at the mansion and develop a quick bond. When Apocalypse figures out that there's a mutant telepath as strong as Xavier, he switches his MO and opts for total human enslavement rather than destruction. After an attack on the X-Mansion results in its destruction, Scott, Jean, and Kurt hatch a rescue mission. With Angel and Psylocke defeated, Magneto and Storm turn on Apocalypse, and the entire complement of X-Men are able to defeat him. Together, they rebuild the X-Mansion, but Magneto refuses Xavier's offer to stay and help him teach mutants how to manage their powers. In 1992, it's revealed that Professor Xavier recruited Jean Grey to the school when she was eight years old after losing control of her powers, leading to the death of her mother. Her father abandoned her out of fear, forcing Xavier to put mental blocks in her mind to shield her from trauma as he did in the original timeline. However, when the X-Men are tasked with saving a space shuttle, a solar flare hits Jean. Although she survives, she gains significantly amplified powers, which allows her to break down those mental blocks. Jean suffers PTSD that makes her powers uncontrollable and fills her with rage and pain. Eventually, she has to fight the X-Men that are attempting to stop her from hurting innocent people. In the ensuing battle, she injures Quicksilver and kills Mystique. She seeks help from Magneto but is turned away when he sees what a threat she is. Jean is ultimately embraced by the Dabari aliens, whose leader, Vuk, explains that she's been possessed by a cosmic force known as the Phoenix. Unfortunately, the Dabari turn on Jean as Vuk seeks to obtain her power and enslave humanity. The X-Men win the battle, but it forces Jean to explode in a burst of Phoenix energy. The aftermath sees McCoy taking over the school and Xavier retiring to Paris to hang out with Magneto. One day, a Phoenix figure appears in the sky over them, implying that Jean may not be dead after all. In the modern day of the new timeline, Wade Wilson is horribly disfigured, but given a powerful healing factor similar to Wolverine after agreeing to an experimental treatment from the villain Ajax. The mercenary's quest for revenge gets the attention of the X-Men, who send Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead to convince him to join. When will he grow up and see benefits of becoming X-Men? Which benefits? The matching unitards? The house that blows up every few years? Wilson, under his new moniker of Deadpool, refuses until Vanessa, the love of his life, is in danger and convinces the duo to help him. It's only after Vanessa dies that Deadpool agrees to try being an X-Men team member on a trial basis. Unfortunately, he fills his trial period by killing an alleged child abuser. In a desperate attempt to find purpose, Deadpool meets a time traveler named Cable who tells him that a boy exists in his timeline who goes on to become a great supervillain. 
After convincing Cable that he doesn't need to assassinate the boy to save his timeline, the duo team up and thwart the second dystopian future nightmare of the franchise. Once it's all over, Deadpool gets his hand on the ability to time travel, rescues Vanessa from dying, considers killing Hitler, and murders the version of Wade Wilson that Wolverine fights in X-Men Origins in the original timeline. However, given Deadpool's meta, fourth wall breaking qualities, it's hard to know whether any of the events of his movies are truly canonical to the larger X-Men timeline. Due to its lack of visible crossover characters and sparse references to other points in the timeline, it's a little tricky to pinpoint when 2020's The New Mutants is happening. Luckily, we know that it happened between 2024 and 2027, after the other X movies but before the events of Logan. When a tragic catastrophe befalls her reservation, Danielle Danny Moonstar wakes up in Millbury Hospital. Dr. Cecilia Reyes leads Danny to believe Millbury is a treatment facility for mutants with recently emerged powers. Danny meets fellow teenage patients, Rain Sinclair, Ileana Rasputin, Sam Guthrie, and Roberto da Costa. Sadly, Dr. Reyes is not who she claims to be. Once her secret bosses order her to execute Danny, she's forced to reveal herself as a flunky for the mysterious Essex Corporation, with an endgame of shaping young mutants into assassins. Rain rescues Danny, and the rest of the gang rallies in her defense, but they're no match for Dr. Reyes's force field powers. The duplicitous doctor appears victorious until she's eaten by a manifestation of Danny's powers known as the Demon Bear. Once the team subdues the Demon Bear, the new mutants leave Millbury. After the events of Days of Future Past, Logan's consciousness is transported back into his 2023 body. He finds himself in the X-Mansion, not a dystopia. He also sees Jean Grey, Cyclops, and everyone else alive and well, having no recollection of the previous timeline. It's implied that Wolverine unpacks the experience to Xavier, but their celebration would not last long. Logan brings the audience to 2029, where Logan's healing powers are fading. It's also revealed that Charles Xavier, now senile, accidentally killed all the other X-Men in some kind of seizure episode a year prior. Only Wolverine is left alive and caring for Charles, who he hopes to take to the middle of the ocean where he won't be a threat to anyone while living out the rest of his days. When I get back, we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna drive down to Yalapa, we're gonna get ourselves a boat, and we're gonna go live on the ocean. However, when the duo discovers a little girl that has similar powers to Logan based on experiments with his DNA, they set off on a quest to get her to safety in Canada. Along the way, they're attacked by another clone of Wolverine, one with a stronger healing factor than the aging Logan. The clone kills Xavier, but Wolverine and the girl, Laura, manage to escape. They reach the border of a safe haven in Canada, only to be attacked by Laura's creators, who want her back for further experiments. Logan injects himself with a serum that temporarily restores his healing factor, allowing him to defeat both the soldiers and his clone. However, the film ends with the hero succumbing to his wounds and being buried underneath a cross that Laura turns into an X. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Looper videos about your favorite superhero franchises are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.